Hi, welcome to the Bridge Podcasts. We hope you enjoy the following message. For more information on all that's happening at the Bridge Church, please visit www.bridge-church.com. God has been preparing me for this since since the beginning of this year. Uh, at the beginning of this year, I went on a tour uh, to uh, North Wales with some of the brethren from the church, Jim, John, and, and Humberto, and we went to a place called Phil de, Bre- Phil de Brennan. And uh, there I, I got inspired by the blessing, the grace for a blessing. And uh, there's many things in the body of Christ that, that uh, we, in the body of Christ, have glazed over or, or I haven't, haven't shared in depth, but I believe the Holy Spirit wants me to share this in depth over a few weeks. I believe it will be a, a fantastic blessing to the body. I believe that if you open your minds and your hearts to receive, that the Holy Spirit will quicken this Word to you so that you will be uh, blessed in, in, in everything that you put your hand to. And that was God's main intention for man from, from the Garden of Eden. When, when God put Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, He intended that the Garden of Eden wouldn't just be in one place. He said to Adam, be fruitful and multiply that garden. So, the whole earth should have been covered by the Garden of Eden. We should all have been living in the Garden of Eden until sin came in and uh, that whole thing was shut down. But that was God's intention in the beginning, that we would all live in that, in that type of blessing. So, the Bible says there, uh, the Lord will command the blessing on you, on you, in your storehouse, storehouses, plural, storehouses, and in all which you set your hand. And He will bless you in the land which the Lord, your God, is giving you. He's giving us a land. So, the first point is the Lord shall command the blessing upon you in your storehouse. The word command is to give an order or to charge or a decree. God gave an order that we should be blessed. And the, the blessing is a declaration which empowers someone to prosper and succeed in everything that they do. So, the declaration is that my people shall prosper in everything that we, they do. Uh, and Zechariah there, we saw that we are prisoners of hope, isn't it? Uh, that's what God exp- what wants of us. And Paul said in Philippians 1.20 that he had an eager desire and persistent expectation. He, he was persistently hoping. He was per- persistently expecting something good to happen. And uh, we have to get to that place in our life uh, where we are persistently expecting something good to happen. Listen, uh, uh, last night I could have expected to wake up dead this morning. Uh, do you know what I'm saying? Uh, so it may sound like a bit, but that's the kind of pressure that was on my, my body. And I, but I, I decided not to do that. I decided to live and not die. Amen? So, uh, that's the blessing, and, and, and God has commanded it uh, on our lives. And not only, when I say our, I'm not speaking personally. I'm speaking personally, but I'm speaking to every one of you here. God has commanded the blessing on your life. You say, well, I, I, I don't know if I'm living in it. Well, I believe that after this series, you'll know if you're living in it or not. The Bible says this in Proverbs 10, 22, the blessing of the Lord, it makes rich and adds no sorrow with it. Let me get this uh, clear right at the very beginning. We're talking about the blessing. We're, it, 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 it's not just prosperity with money, okay? The, the definition of prosperity is the ability to meet every given need at every given time. Every given time. Uh, Helen didn't need money today. She needed prayer 
for a mastectomy that she's going to have. Are you with me? She needed prayer against fear of going for that operation, isn't it? And fear of the, uh, uh, the result or, or the doctor coming back with uh, a, a bad biopsy or something. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so, that money wouldn't help that. But the faith in God's Word will. Are you with me? So, uh, it's every given need. If you need peace, and then you pray for peace, and God will bless you with His peace. Uh, are you with me? So, that, that's what God came for. So, uh, the blessing of the Lord makes a person rich in everything that His hand finds to do. Amen? In everything your hand finds to do, Psalm 1 says you shall prosper. Uh, Genesis 1.28, the Bible says, God told Adam to be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth, subdue it, and have dominion over it. You see, <clears throat> I alluded to that in the beginning. The Garden of Eden was to cover the whole earth until the sin, until man uh, thought that God wasn't giving them the whole package. And they said, we want to be like God. And God said, I've already made you like me. I made you in my image and likeness. But Satan came and says, no, he's holding something back from you. He says, he's holding something back from you. And, and, and as soon as somebody says, no, he's holding something back from you, you think, oh, I wonder what he's holding back from me. And you see, that thought will cause you to, to go against God's plan for your life or God's plan. So, storehouses, uh, the, the word storehouses means multiple places where goods and wealth are stored. That's bank accounts, investment accounts, wherever something of value is stored. You see, God will protect and multiply whatever is in these storehouses. So, you say, uh, Pastor, I don't even have a bank account. I don't even have a penny in savings. I don't have anything. Well, you see, what, God, what you're going to learn over the next few weeks is that if you will take something, something, and start to do something, begin to put a pound away or to put five pound away whenever you can afford it, then you've got a bank, uh, a savings bank, that you can then start putting into, or an investment that you can put into. You see, God blesses your investments. He blesses you when you do something. He cannot bless you when you're not doing anything. So, you've got to be doing something for God to bless you. You've got to give Him the root, the opportunity to bring that into your, your life. Amen? You, you, you see, the Dead Sea is called the Dead Sea because life flows into it, but nothing flows out of it. So, the process is we, whatever comes in, you must give out from whatever comes in or else that's going to die. Uh, are you with me? So, uh, the, these are the principles of God's Word. So, God will protect and multiply whatever you give Him. And storehouses are, in those days were barns, granaries, cellars, where the corn, wine, and oil were laid up, preserving the corn, the corn from being devoured by vermin. When I was a boy, I used to go, and we used to have big mills. Remember them? <laughs> no. <laughs> What's a big mill? It's a big thrashing machine that came to the farms, and uh, it, it, it was a huge thing, and it had a big tractor and huge flywheels. If you went anywhere near the, the, the belts that were driving it, you would have got killed. There was no such things as guards on the machines or anything, and you were feeding the, the corn into this thing, and it was bashing away, and there was dust all over the place. But as you got down, man, there was... Uh, everybody tied their, 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 their trousers shut like this. And because when you got down to the bottom, 
there was thousands of rats, and everybody's going about killing these rats like it was, it, it was genocide of rats day. And uh, we, we had to kill all these rats because the rats would get into the store. Well, they didn't have it in the storehouse. That was outside. But it was the same in the storehouse where we put it in the granary before it went into the thrashing machine. Uh, the rats would just be everywhere. So God will protect your storehouse. Are you with me? Uh, we see Joseph built a series of storehouses because he knew a famine was coming and nothing was, uh, the pests didn't get into the storehouses. Are you with me? God, when He gives you directions, He will make sure that the pests don't get into your storehouse to eat your, to eat your harvest. Amen. Amen? So God will protect that. Uh, Deuteronomy 28, 8 from the New Living, Testament, New Living Testament says, the Lord will guarantee a blessing on everything you do and will fill your storehouses with grain. He will guarantee, guarantee. You know what a guarantee is? He will guarantee you. And it's not a thousand kilometer guarantee or a one year guarantee. He will guarantee everything you do, and He will cause your storehouses to be filled with grain. When we understand that the blessings of the Lord are commanded on our lives. Amen? Amen. How many of you think that's good? I believe that God has taken this church to another level. I believe that this is a message that you'll go out and you'll tell your friends about, and you'll tell your family about, and say, you've got to hear this. We don't have to live poor in Scotland. We don't have to live poor in Africa. You don't have to live poor in any country of the world when you understand the commanded blessing. Amen? So, uh, everything that you have shall cut when the commanded blessing starts working in your life, in your life. Everything that you have shall come by divine appointment. You shall have nothing casually, but everything both spiritual and temporal shall come from the immediate command of the Lord. Amen? He has commanded it. Uh, and due to, uh, sorry, in Numbers 23, 20, it, it says, the Lord has commanded it and no man can revoke it. No man can reverse it. The Lord has commanded it and no man can reverse it. For me, that's exciting, that, that the Lord has commanded something that no man can reverse. It says, by the stripes of Jesus, you have been healed. He's commanded that. He says, I will give you my spirit. He will be, he'll be with you always. Everywhere you go, He'll never leave you or never forsake you. He's commanded that His Spirit stay here on earth and stay here with everyone that's asked Jesus Christ into their life as their personal Lord and Savior. That commanded blessing is on your life as soon as you receive Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. How many of you think that's good news? I think it's awesome news for those of us that will believe the Word of God. Amen? That will get the revelation of God's Word. I know uh, just about everybody in here, and I know that uh, you would like to, you have dreams that you can't fulfill because you're, 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 you're not living the blessed life. But I believe uh, we're also doing that in the, 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 the life groups, the, the blessed life, is that right? Yeah, we're doing that in the life groups, the blessed life. So, uh, God's brought us to a season where He wants His people blessed. Amen? Nudge your neighbor and say, you blessed. So, uh, the Lord, uh, so the, the, the next bit of that verse says, the Lord shall command the blessing upon all you set your hand to do. Everything you undertake will succeed and prosper. Not, not, my, not my word, but God's word. Amen? Aren't you glad it's not my word? The Lord shall command the blessing upon all that you set your hand to do. All in the Hebrew means all. All in the Greek means all. 
Amen? So everything that you set your hand to do, every situation, every problem, uh, everything that God will open your eyes to opportunities, and when you set your hand to it, God will bless you. That means in uh, whatever you manufacture, whatever your occupation, whatever your trade is, wherever you're employed, uh, God will command the blessing in all you set your hand to, in all of your businesses. In Deuteronomy 2.7 and the NIV, it says, the Lord your God has blessed you in all the… the oh, I love this. The Lord your God has blessed you in all the work of your hands. He has watched over your journey through the vast desert. These 40 years, the Lord your God has been with you, and you have not lacked anything. Wow. The Israelites came out of Egypt. For 40 years, they walked in the wilderness, the Bible tells us, that their clothes never wore out. Imagine, husbands, if you could buy your wife a pair of shoes that didn't wear out for 40 years. Or your, child, your school child, buy them a pair of shoes that last for the whole school term. It wouldn't the term just, not for years, just for the term. Uh, how would that be, you know? And it's, it's like, uh, the Bible says there was neither anyone, and no, no one lacked anything, neither was there any sick amongst them. Yeah. Wow. You see, God will take care of every aspect of your life. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. It's the truth. Uh, and uh, it's, uh, Deuteronomy 12, 7 from the, uh, the Word says, There in the presence of the Lord your God, you and your family shall eat and shall rejoice in everything you've put your hand to because the Lord your God has blessed you. Not just you, you and your families shall live in that blessing. Amen? The, take these Scriptures that... Get this podcast and, uh, and listen to it and get this into your spirit. Psalm 128, 1 says, Blessed are all who fear the Lord, who walk in His ways. You will eat the fruit of your labor. Blessing and prosperity will be yours. It's, it, God doesn't say, uh, it might be yours if I'm feeling okay that day or, or whatever. He says, it will be yours. He uses, that's the strongest verb in the English language, language. It shall be or it will be yours. How many of you'd lift your hand and say, I'm going to, I want mine now. I, I want mine. I, I'm taking mine now. You see, sometimes you've just got to take it. You've just got to take it. I remember I shared a, a message one time about uh, uh, the blessings and the miracles of God, and I had a, a, one of these huge uh, tennis rackets, and uh, I, I got these sponge balls, and I, I was sharing how the miracles are coming towards you, but you've got to catch them. So I was hitting these balls, for those of you that weren't there, into the audience, and people were jumping for the balls to get them because they didn't want to miss the miracle. Well, some, you've got to keep your eyes open so that you can receive your miracle. Amen? And in, the, in Psalm 90, 17, it says, And may the Lord our God show us His approval and make all our, our efforts successful. May the Lord our God show us His approval and make our efforts successful. God loves you, and you are already approved by Him. Amen? His mercy, His grace is towards you. You're approved by God. Amen? Thank God. So, the next part, He shall bless you in the land. Deuteronomy 28, 8 from the, uh, the CEV version of the Bible says, The Lord your God is giving you the land, and He will make sure you're successful in everything you do. That means if this land is ours, if you look at my garden, there's nice stripes and the grass and everything. I take care of it. It's my land. Okay, the bit at the back I don't care of, take care of. I give that to God, and He takes care of it. So, that's a nice part. Uh, so, anyway, it's the land has been given unto us. The land. What land? Scotland. Yes. Amen. Yes. 
Every place in which our foot shall tread, He has given it to us. As, as, as we drive, we drive through areas. Uh, Psalm 2 verse 8, uh, Lord, uh, we ask You for the heathen as our inheritance. So, we, we ask for the people of the land as our inheritance. Do you get me? Uh, so, uh, you say, Lord, You've given this all to us already. Amen? Uh, so, we've got to go and take the land. Amen? We've got to take the land. We've got to claim the land as ours. We've got to start moving into that land. Uh, there's Oscars and Anna. They're going back to Latvia. When they go back to Latvia, they've already said, it's, it's like uh, that Irish guy in, uh, in Braveheart. I, I'm, I'm the king of Ireland. It's my land. <laughs> it's my land. Uh, that's, what he, that, that's what he would say. It's my land. We've got to say, this is my land. This is Scotland. It's my land. Or whatever land you, you believe God has uh, told you is your land, you've got to go and say, it's my land. Uh, so, <clears throat> uh, so, he's given, and he'll make sure you're successful in everything you do. Some of you may have trouble getting your brain around that. You know, that's within context. Um, if, 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 if you're better at mechanics, don't think you're going to be a brain surgeon. Are, are you with me? There's, there, it's within the context of what God's talking about. It's based on your gifts and talents that He's given you. <clears throat> so, you find out what your gifting is, your talents are. You find out what your children's gifting and what their talents are. You, that, uh, that's why the Bible says, bring up your children in the way of the Lord, and when they're old, they will not depart from it. Uh, the Bible means that you find out what their talents are, and you help them enhance those talents so that uh, for the rest of the life, that talent will feed them and their families. Does that make sense? And God will enhance that in their lives when they believe that, when you teach the Word to them. Deuteronomy 8 uh, says uh, in, in, in verse, uh, verse 7, the land God has given us, the land God has given us. Genesis 26, 12 says, when Isaac planted his crops that year, he harvested a hundred times more grain than he planted. For the Lord blessed him. He became a very rich man, and his wealth continued to grow. You know, we, we, we've had uh, Didier Tisson here, and Didier, Didier Tisson started selling uh, fertilizer from the back of a one-ton truck. And uh, eventually, uh, now he is the biggest uh, supplier and applier of fertilizer in Africa, uh, I'm taught not only Southern Africa, but uh, Northern Africa, different places. His company's gone all over the world. He's a billionaire, but he started from uh, at the back of a, a small truck selling something. Amen? Uh, we, we, we know a, a couple in Edinburgh, uh, they started, they, they, they had nothing and they sold a washing machine. And uh, they got a good return on the washing machine, so they bought more white goods and started selling them. And they became the biggest Merck dealership in Edinburgh, uh, Western Automobiles. Uh, they started off selling uh, uh, washing machines. You look at me, at me like a calf at a new gate. Uh, it's, like, it's like God will bless you if you just give Him the opportunity, if you do something, He will bless you in, in the ideas that He has given you. Amen. So, uh, Isaac planted his crops, and uh, uh, we, we heard this testimony one time from a tomato farmer in South Africa. He says, uh, at the times when the rains come, if they come so hard, it just destroys the whole crops. So he says, uh, the rains were coming, he could see these really black clouds, and he went out in the middle of his field, and he just prayed, Lord, don't let it rain in my fields. And the rain rained in all the fields round about him and didn't rain in his field. And most of us have seen faith like potatoes, the, 
the, the, the movie that we've had from, uh, from South Africa, and uh, the guy planted potatoes in a dry time of the year, and he was told he'd get no harvest. And he says, I'm believing God for a harvest. And the harvest was a phenomenal harvest in arid times. Potatoes need loads of water to grow, but God grew the potatoes. So, Isaac planted crops and harvested a hundred times more grain than he planted. He became a very rich man, and his wealth continued to grow. Uh, a, a, a note here is a hundredfold return was an unusual harvest for Gerar, where he was. Even in the more fertile regions of Israel, the yield normally was no greater than 25 to 50-fold. Isaac's land was uh, blessed by God in spite of a serious famine. So, if you look at the, the circumstances instead of looking at the commanded blessing, you won't do. You'll say, I oh, know, Pastor, I don't have anything. I, I can't do this. I can't do that. Take the can out of your vocabulary. Uh, you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. You can do whatever your hand finds to do, God says, and He will prosper it. It's only when you canny, canny, canny that you won't. You, you understand? It's like uh, if you do something, He will. If you do nothing, He can't. God canny. <laughs> you didn't know He was Scottish, did you? Uh, God can't if you don't. So, we've got to move in with what God is doing. I mean, we've got to take the Word and then flow in that Word uh, that God gives us. Uh, Deuter uh, Deuteronomy 28, uh, John Gill's exposition of the Bible says, with health and long life in it, and with an abundance of all good things, it will it being a land flowing with milk and honey. You see? So, that's uh, John Gill's exposition. With health and long life in it. With health and long life in it. When you believe God for His commanded blessing, you'll have health and long life in it. Amen? Health and long life. Psalm 91 uh, says we will have long life. With, with long life shall I satisfy you and show you my salvation so that God will show you His salvation and long life. And uh, I want to end with this. Uh, this is from the Chumash. Uh, the Chumash uh, stone, actually. It's a book. Uh, it's, it's another name for the Torah. You all know what the Torah is. It says, God will bring the blessing of prosperity into Ertes Israel. I suppose that's Israel, so that the merchants and in, the, the merchants and investors will have no need to travel abroad to make their fortunes. Wow. So that the merchants and the investors, uh, there's not, this is what we heard before we went to South Africa in 1975. There's nothing for you in Scotland, son. You might as well go. There's nothing here. That was 1975, 40, is that 40 years ago? Is it 40 years ago? There's nothing here for you, son. And that's still what people are saying today. How many of you ever heard that? There's nothing here, son. The business isn't good, son. There's nothing here. You need to get out of here. No, God says He will bring it to us here. Amen. Amen. And that's why He said to Elijah, go to that place called there. Elijah's like, where's that? He says, I'll show you. But when you get there, he says, I'm going to feed you there. He says, how are you going to feed me? With ravens. And he's like, ravens, they don't bring food, they eat food. They're scavengers. They never give a bit of their food to anybody else. You're going to use ravens to feed me. I don't think so. And God says, go there, and I'll feed you there. I'll meet you there, and you'll be there. I've commanded the ravens to feed you there. So, wherever you are. And then he says to him, look, when that dries up, go to this widow woman, and I've commanded her to feed you there. Amen? So, there's a place that we need to be. 
There's a place where we need to know where the Holy Ghost is, to know where the supply of God is. That's where where God puts you in a place called there so that He can meet you there. That's why God encourages you to get up in the morning and pray because He'll meet you there in that place of prayer. God will meet you in that place where you prepare to meet Him. Are are you getting that? So, So God's got a place called there where we can where we can be blessed. God says, go there, I'll feed you there. And when that dries up, go here, and I've commanded a widow woman to feed you there. He moved him to another situation. You've got to know for three and a half years that uh, King Ahab was hunting him down to kill him because he went with the good news. It says in, in 1 Kings seventeen one. he says, uh, he went to the door and he says, Hello, is Ahab home? And Ahab thought it was Avon calling, and uh, he opened the door, and it was, and it was Elijah, and he says, there's not going to be any rain in your land for the next three and a half years. Goodbye. (laughs) So, it stopped raining, and and, uh, Elijah then uh, became uh, number one enemy to that nation, and they looked the, uh, the, the Bible says that they looked everywhere across the land for Elijah, but he'd clo- he, God had closed the eyes of the people so they couldn't see him, and he put him with a widow woman, and that was to bless the widow woman and her family as well. So when God starts to bless you, he'll move you into places where you can not only be blessed in your own, but you bless others with you. Amen. So, to finish, what is blessed cannot be cursed. And, and that's in uh, uh, Numbers 23, verse 20. Numbers 20. You see, the enemy tried to get the prophet to curse Israel. And, God, and it says, Behold, I have received, and he says, Behold, I have received a command to bless. He has blessed, and I cannot reverse it. Wow, I cannot reverse the commanded blessing. Amen. I cannot com- reverse the command. You have been blessed. Every one of you that know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior have been blessed. You can say, I don't believe in that stuff. I don't know that God wants us to have that stuff. Well, you can believe that, and that's what you'll receive. But if you believe the Word... And the Word is very, very, very clear, and over the next few weeks, I'm going to establish it in more clarity. You'll see it in the New Testament, you'll see it from Genesis right through Revelation, and you'll see how God has got a commanded blessing for His people. And I'll tell you what, uh, because I've been studying it, I'm, I'm trusting for everything that God has for me, for this church, for this church, for you. Say, he's talking to you. Tell your neighbor he's talking to you. I'm talking to you. And, and, and when, you read these, when you read these scriptures, let me give you an encouragement. When you read these scriptures, when, when you read, um, blessed are all who fear the Lord, says, blessed am I, for I fear the Lord. I walk in His ways. I will eat the fruit of my labor. You put yourself into that. Uh, when, you're, when you're going through these Scriptures, uh, you just put you into those Scriptures, and you, the, you then declare those Scriptures, because when you're declaring those Scriptures, the Bible says in Deuteronomy 12, 11, that you overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of your confession. It tells us that in, in uh, Hebrews 10, hold fast to your confession of faith. So, as you hold fast to your confession of faith, then God will make sure that commanded blessing comes in your life. Amen. Thanks for listening. Remember to visit our website, www.bridge-church.com, and connect with us via Facebook and Twitter.